Welcome to Build Your Dream Network. I'm Kelly Hoey. I see people struggling to connect effectively all the time, so I created this podcast to help you master your network building needs. Whether you're seeking a new job, looking for a promotion, or scaling your business, you need a network, and you're in the right place to get the advice you need. And don't worry, my advice is real. It's actionable and practical because it's the advice I follow and is what has transformed my career from the traditional to the unexpected. So let's get started. I am absolutely thrilled to be in the podcast studio today with a very special guest. Uh, She appears at page 146 of Build Your Dream Network. She is film director, activist, and all-around wonderful human being, Elena Rossini, all the way from Paris. Thank you for being here on the show. Thank you so much, Kelly. It's an honor to be here. So for those who don't know your story in the book, you have used social networks, in particular Twitter, as a way of building your business. And that might be shocking or surprising to people that you have built your business and your business networks and personal relationships because of Twitter. Is that still the case? It's been three years since I interviewed you. Is, it, is that still the case? Um, and has anything in your Twitter use changed? It's absolutely still the case. I knew you might ask me about my Twitter use today. And actually thinking back, I think every single job opportunity that has come my way, every conference, speaking gig, um, the most important people in my network, I have had that for Twitter. Uh, It's been absolutely incredible. I have been using Twitter since 2008, and the way that I use it, um, I try to be very intentional um, about the people that I connect with and the kind of content that I post. And I love that in your book you give like very concrete examples to people, like to help them um, and to improve the way that they network. So just to give you like a quick example of how I think Twitter really shines when it comes to connecting with people. I use a Twitter list. So that means they can be either public or they can be private. And so when I create a list, it can be called friends, it can be called people in media, or I make a list um, when I'm about to go to a conference and I add people that I know are going to be at the conference. And so I have Twitter streams that don't just have every single person that I follow, but they only have the people in that specific list. Lists are such a good way of keeping on top of people. Yeah, absolutely. And I use a tool called Tweetbot uh, that's available both for iPhone but also for your computer. And it allows you to add filters. So you can say, I want to see, you know, I want to read this list, but disable retweets. So I only see messages that have been written by the people that I follow, not like what they're retweet. really saying. And um, and unless they've commented on a tweet, um, if they're just mindlessly retweeting things, you're not having to see all of that nonsense. Exactly. And so every day, first thing that I do when I open up Twitter, I go through my friends list. It's private, but I see what my friends are up to. And then I move on to other ones, like women in film, um, or you know, a list of a conference that I really like, that I've been going to for five years, Inspire Fest, to connect with those people that you know I've originally met through that conference. Okay, I'm going to challenge you on something. Yeah. Every day, every day on Twitter. Haven't you just been off Twitter for what five weeks, my <laughs> yes. friend? <laughs> yeah. Okay, so people may be shocked hearing that. You took an ex- what would seem like a lifetime, an extended absence off of that networking platform. Yeah. And what happened? Uh, nothing really changed, I would say. So I took time off because I had two really intense freelance projects and I was preparing my wedding. And I thought, I want to remove from my life things that are not strictly necessary and 
I would say that Twitter is necessary for networking, but in the summertime and in August especially, I find that it's very quiet. And so I decided to take a little pause. And when I got back, um, I didn't really lose any following. Nothing had really changed. But people actually sent me messages when I was gone. <laughs> sort of like, are you okay? What is going on? <laughs> which which mirrors human behavior when we haven't seen someone at, uh, I want to say, the club or the organization or place of work. When, when someone's been absent, you know, we don't forget about them. We're delighted that, that they're back, but mm-hmm. we don't, you know, just completely drop them from our circle of, you know, colleagues or friendships because, you know, they've taken a vacation, heaven forbid. Um, And maybe that's just also a tribute to your usage of the platform, that people were there and waiting for your insights when you got back. And something that they said that um, was really heartwarming for me, um, a couple of people said, you bring so much positivity to our Twitter feed, so it's so nice to have you back. And I think that's one of the reasons why maybe my projects have been successful and my engagement on Twitter has been successful is I try to post content that I find to be empowering and uplifting. And Twitter can be a very toxic place, and I try to stay away with that from that with the tone of my messages and with the content of my messages well it's it's i might say in the ideal sense of why we delight uh as opposed to having the horror of social networks is when it is that true connection uh and that place to share messages with people we know and love and people we want to know uh and and share ideas with um let's talk about the way you're networking now and you hit on it with your some of your new projects uh, and you do these things um, for your own, I'm going to say for your own reasons, as opposed to to create notoriety or increase your numbers of following. And let's talk about your Giphy channel. Yes. Let's talk about where that started and let's talk about the gifts that you're making. Yeah. Um, so it started in 2016. Out of curiosity, I went on Google and I searched for film director, and I clicked on Google Images, and I was horrified to see that the top results for film director in Google Images were mostly white men, and I think this was the case for the first, I would say, 50 to 75 photos that came up. The first woman was Barbie film director, not even a woman, a doll. It made me so angry, (laughs) so angry. Um, And then I thought to myself, well, what could I do to possibly have an influence in the images that we see and in the representation of film directors online? I thought, what if I create my own images and then see, you know, if they do well, they might end up being in the results in Google, in Google search results. And I think, a little parenthesis, um, I think that representation, especially when it comes to women in professional fields, is so important. When we look at the world of film, um, there are many studies that show that year after year, in the top 250 films that are released in movie theaters, um, only 7% of directors for them have been women. And cinematographers, like female cinematographers, only make up 3% of all cinematographers working in the top films. And when you think of female film directors, I know so many of them, when they go to pitch meetings at production companies, very often they have incredible talent, but they're not successful in convincing producers to be hired because producers like to hire people that they're familiar with and they're mostly familiar with male directors. And so I thought, well, let's just like try and create something that's positive, that's going to increase the online imagery of female film directors. And so I decided to make one animated GIF a day And the style will always be the same. So a photo of a woman director on set with the words slowly coming in 
that said, this is what a film director looks like, and then the name of each director in big, bold letters. And I began to do this in, I think it was September of 2017, and I began to post them on Twitter. And my followers, like, they really liked this. Like, there was a lot of engagement, a lot of retweets, a lot of likes, a lot of encouragement from them. And I would always tag Giphy, the company that's, like, the largest repository of animated GIFs online. And people working at Giphy began following me on Twitter and began responding to me to say that it was a really cool project. And six months into it, when I'd made, like, over 100 gifts. They gave me my own official channel. And what that means is that all of the images that I produce and that I, I upload, uh, being verified, they show up in the search engine of Giphy at the top. And they show up on Twitter as well, on Slack, because Twitter and Slack, they have integrations with Giphy. And I was very strategic when I made them. I knew that I could add up to 20 keywords. And I added keywords for film director, not just in English, but also in Italian, in Spanish, in German, and in French. And what's really funny is that now, two years into it, um, basically when you look up film director on Giphy or on Twitter and Slack, you see so many of my images. They come up on top. They're the most prominent results. And I created a gender gap effectively because in other languages, when somebody looks up film director in Italian, it's like a registered name. You only have my images. So it's like 100% women. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. And what you think of people who feel so isolated, who don't see role models, they don't see mentors, the rooms they walk into both online and off, don't look like them, which then becomes barriers to making connections. And for people listening, they may think it's so like, well, oh, it's just a, it's just a GIF. Oh, it's just an image. But how it has the effect of breaking down barriers and increasing those human connections. And you've actually walked into events and <laughs> met some of the subjects of your GIFs, have you not? I have. It's been hilarious. It's been so funny because I often attend conferences and events of, you know, women in film or at film festivals with like prominent filmmakers. And I think it was about a year ago, I went to an event that had Oscar winners and like a lot of very, very prominent female directors. And two of them I had featured in my Giphy project. And so I went up to them. I took out my phone and I said, oh, hey, I'm Elena. I'm a filmmaker and activist. Look, I made you a GIF. And <laughs> There's an icebreaker if someone hadn't had one before. <laughs> exactly. But actually what really delighted me was one of the two film directors. Um, I absolutely adore her work. And she said, oh, hi, Elena. Yeah, of course, I remember you because I'd been tagging her on Twitter and I often respond to her tweets. And so she knew of me. She remembered me. And so we had a nice little conversation and she even wanted to take a photo with me. And it just made me so happy. That's it's beautiful. I mean, and I love that you do this because it's something you wanted to change. And I can imagine when you were growing up thinking, all right, how can I be, you know, something that you've never seen? Um, and then you sort of magnify that with not having that imagery out there in the world. Um, you're in New York because also not because it's going to happen here in New York. I know it's helping, happening elsewhere. You um, are on a panel. Uh, you're going to meet for the first time in nine years or yeah. over nine years, mm -hmm. the distributors for your first film, The Illusionist. Yes. How did they find you? How did you find, you know, how did you network and get your, you know, film distributors? And how, over nine years, have you built a relationship with a couple of, I would say, women in the industry that you've never met in person? Yeah. Um, so when I began to do research for my documentary, The Illusionist, I created a blog. And this was a really long time ago. So this was 2008, 2009. And it was 
the end of the golden age of blogs. And I remember that almost every day I would post something on the blog that was related to body image, images of women in advertising, things that I had discovered doing research for The Illusionist that I wanted to share with an audience because I found that to be fascinating. And I think that it really helped um, to share that on Twitter because um, I built an audience that way. I remember that in the early days, um, some of the women that I wanted to interview for the film began following me on Twitter because they found me and the project that way. And I think I was creating value in a way. I was sharing content that was just really intriguing and fascinating. Other times, things that made me mad about stereotypes about women in advertising. And I remember getting an email out of the blue from this woman called Alex that worked at the Media Education Foundation. And she said, oh, I found out about your film on Twitter. I began following your blog. It seems really, really interesting. So please let me know once you finish your film, um, send me a copy. I would love to take a look at it and see if we are interested in doing distribution at the Media Education Foundation. So I always kept Alex in mind and we kept interacting on Twitter throughout the years. Mind you, um, this was in 2010. Um, I had my final cut of the film in 2015. Wow. And I sent it to her. She loved it. And she said, yes, we absolutely want to distribute your film. So all of the communication that we had was done over email, Twitter, and then eventually moved to Skype or the phone. They became my distributors and uh, they've done a fantastic job in the educational market, really pushing for my film, doing a lot of advertising. And now they have this event that honors a woman that I interviewed in The Illusionist, Jean Kilborn, who is a phenomenal writer, filmmaker. She's the leading expert on advertising and the toxic effect of advertising messages on women's self-esteem and self-image. So she has a 40-year anniversary for her film that was distributed by the MEF, and they're doing a gala. They invited me to speak, and I told them I'd love to come a day early. And they said, fantastic, we can have dinner and we can finally meet for the first time in real life. All these people who you've interviewed, admired, connected with, and not in person, but have this immense bond. Your insights, and I think it has come through for all the listeners, in terms of how we can use these digital platforms in such a human way and have them mirror our human behaviors as opposed to transforming our behaviors into something that we don't want to be um, in terms of being transactional or commercial. Um, and that also that this is, when used in a genuine way, you know, it takes time. Um, and I think all of this, your use shows that. Um, you say it's a long time, but in a human terms, and suppose with dog ears, in human terms, you know, 2000, Bill starting building a relationship with someone in 2009 or 2010 and having it bear fruit, you know, five, ten years later is actually more a mirror of reality. There is so much more I'd love to talk to you about, and I'm hoping that the next time you're in New York, you will come back and be on. Sure. Absolutely. Be on the show with me, please. I'd love to. You can find out more on my special guest, Eleanor Rossini, film director and activist. Find her on Twitter. She's at underscore Elena. You can also find information on her film, The Illusionist. And uh, I'll see you here next week. Thank you for listening to Build Your Dream Network. Stay connected and don't miss a networking insight by subscribing to the podcast. And while you're there, I'd love you to rate and review the show too. Are you looking for more networking advice? Pick up a copy of my book, Build Your Dream Network. It's your guide to modern networking. I'd like to hear your networking questions, tips, and ideas. Connect with me via my website, 
jkellyhoey.co. You'll find links to all my social media accounts, plus a contact form to email me your questions. I'm Kelly Hoey, and I'll be back again next week to tackle your networking challenges.